Hello and welcome to Studio Wildlife. In this video I'm going to be showing you something a bit different and sharing how I painted this horse portrait in acrylics. Like a lot of my paintings I started off with the eye. First of all outlining the basic shape using carbon black. Remember horses have oval shaped pupils unlike a lot of animals which have more of a round shape which is something to keep in mind. I then used burnt umber for the rest of the eye and a grey mix for the reflections. I then used more of the grey for the skin surrounding the eye. When all of the darkest tones were in place, I then added a few lighter grey highlights to pick out some areas near the tear ducts and also to give more dimension to the iris. Once the eye was in place, I then started to block in the basic bone structure surrounding the eye using raw umber. I followed this with raw sienna for the mid-tones and finally a raw sienna and white mix for the highlights. I'm keeping things very soft and blended at this stage as I'm just adding the foundations for the details to be built on top later. I'm using a small angle brush for this stage and keeping the paint fairly thin so that it flows and blends easily. I'm also using an old frayed round brush for some of the larger areas. This is why I very rarely throw away brushes as I always seem to be using them even if it's what they weren't initially intended for. I then moved on to blocking in the ears, using pretty much the same process as when I was working on the area around the eye. I've also added some burnt sienna to these areas to bring some more richness to the chestnut colouring. I'm sticking mostly to the angle brush rather than the round brush to do this as I can create sharper lines with this brush and give more definition to the shape of the ear. For the lighter areas of the mane I'm using raw sienna whipped with some white for the highlights and burnt sienna for the shadows. As you can see in this area I am switching between the old frayed round brush for the main areas of the forehead and then the angle brush for the marking in those sharper outlines towards the outline of the horse. I'm still keeping the paint fairly thin at this stage as I'm just mapping out the basic tones to build the basic structure of the horse. Moving on to the top of the neck and the cheekbones I'm still aiming just to block in the basic areas of colour. The colour of the cheekbone on this horse was very rich, so I swapped to some of the Mars orange from Arteza for this section of the painting. I've then overlaid this with burnt umber for the shadowed areas. Painting horses where it all started out for me. I took on my first commission when I was 16, which was of a dapple grey Welsh pony that I drew in graphite. Throughout high school and college I refused to draw anything else and it was only after university that I started to focus more on my wildlife for non-commissioned work. For the muzzle area I'm used to using a very basic black and white mix and adjusting the ratio according to the tone that I want for that particular area. I then start introducing the Mars orange and white mix and start to blend the greys into the chestnut colouring of the fur higher up. As I block in the neck I'm using the same colour combinations and the same round brush. There weren't really any sharply defined areas in this section like there were on the face so I didn't really need to use the angle brush. I work quite quickly in the blocking in stage so I can just blend the different colours into each other for a very blended base coat. I then just carried on with this process for the rest of the neck and the shoulder area. Now that the basic blocking is in place, I move on to the more detailed layer. This time I'm using a small detail brush to pick out some of the individual lighter hairs around the ears. For the forelock, I'm using a raw sienna and white mix for the highlights and a burnt umber and black mix for the shadows. I'm not using pure black for the shadows as I still want these areas to tie in with the warm tones that make up the rest of the horse's chestnut colouring. Next I'm using an angle brush and a detail brush to define the top of the horse's head. I want to keep the detail fairly soft looking so that you'll notice that I occasionally glaze over the detail with a round brush to blend some of the individual hairs back. For the neck and cheek areas, I'm still using the same frayed round brush that I use for the blocking, just with a little more care and trying to match the colours more closely. The main colours that I'm using here are Mars Orange and Yellow Ochre, mixed with various amounts of white to match the tones. I 
For the veins I'm using a detail brush with some thinned out burnt umber to give a, give a bit more definition to these areas, then adding a layer of small lighter hairs in between. Even though I've had the most experience painting horses, I still find that they're one of the most difficult animal subjects to get right. I think it's because they're both soft and angular at the same time. You've got the very defined shapes of the eye socket, cheekbone, etc. combined with the very soft textures of the muzzle and also the mane and tail. Also, as horses tend to have short to medium length coats, it would be quite difficult to strike the balance between incorporating detail into the fur, whilst also appearing short and not too streaked. I think it's very easy to over detail horse fur so it loses its sheen and looks a bit flat. So I tend to use quite worn out angle brushes to make very subtle marks in the direction of the fur. The older brushes are a bit softer and a little frayed and if you stroke them quite lightly on the canvas you can make marks that don't end up too uniform or defined. For the details around the muzzle I'm just adding some additional darker and lighter tones following the folds of the skin using a detail brush. I'm also just working on building a seamless blend between the chestnut fur higher up and the more grey tones of the skin around the muzzle. I want to keep this looking soft so in game I'm just using the old round brush for this. So I was always the crazy horse girl when I was at school. Got a horse when I was 10 years old but before that the closest I would get to horses was by painting them. So that's why I just drew and painted horses all the time. Very lucky to have my own pony now and he's called Dennis and he's a traditional gypsy cob. We've done shows up and down the country and he's done really really well. And he qualified and placed at the Horse of the Year show twice. He's enjoying a bit of an easier life at the moment due to lockdown, but I'm uh, still getting a lot of riding in at home. I've been riding for about 15 years now. For the final details on the neck, I'm using an angle brush and applying mostly some yellow ochre mixed with white. I want to keep the details looking soft so I can thin the paint a little with water as then I can blend the paint more, uh, paintwork more easily into the dried layer of the paint in the previous layer. Thank you very much for... <laughs> <laughs> this is totally going into the video, by the way. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it's definitely going into the video. No, it's not. Don't know, don't you dare. So guys, I hope you enjoyed Amber's tutorial, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a like, and we'll get Amber to do some more of her videos for you. As always, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, and head over to studiowildlife.com for more wildlife art tips, and other art tips in general. Thanks again, and see you next time.